Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining me here this morning. And I hope you've had a good Thanksgiving week. And uh, I guess now again, the countdown has officially began for Christmas. And so uh, thank you for taking a little bit of time this Saturday morning. If you will, take your Bible and uh, your, your phone or your tablet and open it to Psalm 118. 118. Uh, let me give you a little Bible study tip. Um, make sure it's Psalm 118. I have been sitting here for longer than I want to admit, um, trying to figure out how to talk about verse 23 of this chapter and how it fit in with the rest of what we have talked about, only to look up and realize that um, I'm obviously looking at my Bible on my computer screen, um, only to realize that I was in the wrong chapter, looking at the wrong verse. And so, uh, key to studying the Bible is <laughs> make sure you know what verse you are studying. And so, now that we are in 118, verse 23, uh, let's talk about it for just a moment, and that does make my job just a little bit easier today being again on the right page. So uh, let's back up and look at verse 22 and start there. It says the stone which the builders rejected or refused uh, is become the headstone of the corner. And again we said yesterday uh, that we don't know what um, this actually applied to in the original context but that it is prophetic and uh, points towards Christ, which leads then into these next two verses, uh, which as well, uh, we don't know uh, the original context uh, and what the psalmist was writing about, uh, but it is relatively clear uh, then what the prophetic meaning uh, would be. This is the Lord's doing. Um, the, the builders rejected Jesus. Israel rejected Jesus Christ. Um, but uh, this is the Lord's doing. Um, and what that, uh, to put that in uh, my terms, uh, as I would explain it, uh, is that um, God was in control uh, of all those events, uh, not Pilate. Uh, not the religious leaders of Israel, uh, not the Roman soldiers, but uh, that God was in control, uh, and it was his plan uh, from the beginning uh, that uh, we look back and we see uh, Satan being told in the garden uh, that the seed of that woman uh, that, um, that, that would crush his head um, and so God has been planning uh, all along for his son to come uh, and be a sacrifice uh, for our sins. He, he knew um, that uh, the world would reject him and, and refuse him. Uh, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Uh, it is a great, um, I mean, if, if you don't see the prophetic nature of that, and if you don't uh, acknowledge and see what uh, the psalmist, again, don't know his original context, but we can certainly uh, very quickly pick up on the, on the prophetic uh, side of uh, of this uh, of this text, what uh, what he's saying is that uh, again for you and I as we look at this, how wonderful it is that uh, God would send His only begotten Son uh, to die for for you and I. It is a marvelous thing uh, that uh, that He has uh, done for us, and so uh, you and I we can we can see. Uh, what Christ has done. We can see uh, what God has done. We see all of his uh, marvelous works, and they are wonderful uh, in our sight. And this is the day uh, which the Lord hath made. Um, and we use that phrase quite often um, 
in you know we, we'll open up church sometimes I've, I've heard church services open with it we uh, will use it personally um, as a new day uh, dawns to say this is the day uh, which the Lord has made uh, and, and I don't I don't get me wrong I'm not saying I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all uh, but I do believe that in this context um, it is talking about that there is a new day uh, and a new time uh, a when uh, Christ uh, died for our sins and was resurrected that ushered in uh, a new day and a uh, a, a new era um, uh, that we enjoy uh, the ability now to be able to go boldly before uh, the throne uh, of God, that we have access to him to be able to pray, that we have uh, eternal life uh, offered to us. And so uh, when we say, when I think, uh, again, that this uh, statement, when, when they're saying this is the day, uh, they're talking about um, maybe a better way to, for me to say that would be this is the age. Um, we live in a, a different age. Uh, again, speaking prophetically here, uh, we live in a different age. We, we enjoy uh, again, uh, the Old Testament, they couldn't go into the presence of God. The high priest had to go for them. Uh, they had to offer sacrifices on an ongoing basis. But you and I, this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, he has given us a time, uh, allowed us to be in a time uh, when uh, the sacrifice has been uh, already paid, has been uh, the sacrifice has been made at the cross of Calvary. Uh, we don't have to have the high priest to go in uh, for us. We don't have to have him uh, talk to God for us. That we can have an audience with uh, with God himself. And so this is the day uh, that the Lord has made. We should rejoice uh, and be glad in it. And so uh, I hope you'll uh, today uh, be thinking about that. Man, what a glorious, wonderful time uh, we live in. I know there are a lot of uh, bad things that go on around us. I know there are a lot of, um, you know, the news is almost always negative and bad. Uh, but in spite of that bad news, in spite of the negativity, in spite of crime, in spite of all those things uh, that go on around us, we live in a day, we live in an age uh, where we have access to the Father uh, and the promise uh, of his soon return uh, that uh, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. What a great promise. What a great age uh, that uh, that we live in. Uh, and so let us rejoice uh, and be glad in it. Have a good day. Uh, rejoice in this day. And we will see you back here uh, Monday morning.